I had a big curiosity for just how do things work? Like, how does that work? Why does that work? I mean, I, I, fam- I tell this story all the time, but we, I took apart our VCR player at home because I, I wanted to know how one black rectangular object went into a bigger re- black rectangular object and Timon and Pumbaa showed up on the third one. I was like, how, where did it know that they came from? And so for me, the maths and the computing and the ICT and that element of STEM, I guess, was how does that work? Like, this is like magic, but it's not like magic because if I ask enough questions, we'll be able to, you know, see the elements of the tape and, and whatever it might be. And then what can I do using that information? Who can I help with this in-depth knowledge now of databases or of the web or, you know, any of the other things that I was exploring uh, at home? So for me, that that was where it came from. And so it's it wasn't, it, it, there were elements of it that felt like a passion for the sake of maths or a passion for the sake of computer science, but most of it was, you know, I discovered the more maths I knew, the more people I could help, right? Or the more computer science I understood, the more problems that I could solve. And so it was a it was a real big tool set that I got excited learning about and understanding. And there was almost never ending that I could then come back and apply and I could then come back and solve problems. And I could then almost use that as my creativity. And I, and I talk about this a lot as well. You know, other people paint and some people sing and some people write poetry. And I built websites and, and that's my way that I expressed myself. It was using that STEM knowledge and those STEM principles to express myself and allow myself to exist outside of, you know, where, where I am. It's still something that excites me to this day. And even now in, it's the reliability, I think also of the maths and the re- reliability of those principles. And so being a, an arithmetician on, on countdown is one element of maths, but there's so many other elements of it that actually you know, there are, the circle is always going to be a circle, right? A sphere is always a sphere. It will always roll, whether it's an, an orange or a metal ball or whatever it would be. And so that reliability, I think, was the other thing that, if nothing else, I could always go back to the maths, go back to first principles and try and figure out what we were doing from there. <laughs> How can we extrapolate this fourth industrial revolution that we're going through at the moment with all these new technologies that are coming in and uh are becoming uh, usable uh, and feasible and are, are being very swiftly, with a lot of hype actually, uh, very swiftly rolled out across workplaces. And so I think with the STEAM approach, it's definitely the best insurance we have that when these young people are now in the workplace and in the workforce, and actually we have a broader vision, a wider vision, a more diverse vision of the future and what can happen next and what good looks like and what success is, which I think that's what that's what I'm excited about with Steam. This understanding that, you know, going to the moon is one thing and building a civilization on the moon is the other thing. But what have we done on Earth? How who do we have the empathy and the understanding? And who have we been able to connect to and collaborate with to ensure that then that vision that we have next represents the full gamut of people and a broad section of society and all the problems that we have rather than just narrowing in and focusing on one particular set of things. So I'm excited about that. And I'm excited about the multiplicities that we might then be able to have across economies, across visions, across um, our aspirations when we're able to truly embrace that steam and allow to see allow us to see what that different vision of success or even utopia looks like for different people and how those can coexist right and how it can not just be more money and and I, and I think it's something we see already with this generation of young people now where whether it's climate change whether it's sustainability you know all those things which for previous generations maybe might not have been as high up on their list of priorities or how they were defining success we're seeing a new generation now that's that's a little bit more open and is leaning more into what we would now call those steam elements and those steam skills to say okay what does this look like for everybody how can we have a broader view of that value and of what excellence is and of what matters So I think that's that's what I'm kind of excited about. And that's something that we see at the Institute uh, for Future of Work that maybe goes missing, actually, in some of the ways that we're implementing these STEM eventualities. And as as I think I said earlier, you know, a lot of what we're building when you only consider the STEM and you don't have the art and design and when you only consider the function and you don't consider the form, you then limit the innovation you have and the capacity to solve problems. And so that's why it's what we need to have That's what is going to solve the, a lot of the problems we're seeing now in this rollout of STEM and the way that we apply our STEM knowledge. But it's definitely something that I'm, I'm kind of clinging to. That's my optimism for the future, actually, that these young people that we're engaging with STEAM now and they're able to see that it's not necessarily purely science for science sake, but it's the expression that we can have in science. And it's how we can use science to understand expression and the collaboration and the understanding and the connecting. That's what is what we're gonna, if we don't do that, then it will be Black Mirror and it will be Terminator 2 and the robots will marry the grandchildren. 